Hello everyone and welcome to the weekly OTR Essential Q&A video. Exciting times, exciting times, I know. And as always, if you want to take part in this Q&A and hope that your question gets answered, you got to go to Twitter at OTR Essential is the Twitter handle. And when I ask for your questions, reply and give me those questions. Can't get to every single one of them, but I try to include as many of them as I can, which is why this week's, again, will be split up into two parts. So... This is part one. If your question is not answered in part one, it might be answered in part two. And even if your question was answered in part one, why don't you check out part two? Anyways, it'll be up a little bit later. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Chrissy Pooh one asks, your thoughts on Shawn Michaels' haircut? Oh my God. Truly the end of an era. And I don't know if anybody else feels that way, but it seemed like the second he cut his hair, he put on like 10 years of age like that. Like he went on to grant, become Grandpa BK. Oh my God. Sean, no. <laughs> I understand it happens. Who am I to talk? Me cutting my hair. But it's added some years to him like that. Billy Madison. What's the most hypocritical thing the IWC says? <sighs> Sometimes I wish we'd go away from like internet wrestling community because technically everybody that watches wrestling is probably on the internet in some way. I understand what it means. I understand what it's referencing. The hardest of the hardcore uh, wrestling fans that go to forums and websites and dirt sheets and social media and YouTube and stuff and talk about professional wrestling but there are people that do that that aren't that incredibly hardcore either uh, but what's the most hypocritical thing that like the hardest of hardcore fans say I think it's very easily to me to me my opinion is that these guys will sit there and talk about storylines mattering and characters mattering but lo and behold all they really care about our freaking spot fest, freaking no selling, false finish, fuck off matches. Characters don't matter. The storytelling doesn't matter. So I, I always wonder when I see so many people talking about there's no characters, there's no storylines in WWE, but then they just geek out for all these matches that are nothing but fucking spot fests where the guys in them are telling no stories and there are no characters. There's no storyline that really matters leading up to the match. And if there is a storyline, most certainly usually isn't a very good one. Um, that seems to be the most hypocritical thing. Sheezy Ali asks, with 35 being a milestone, will Charlotte Flair versus Ronda Rousey close the show. Well, I think that's what everybody's talking about right now. That seems to be like the favorite in the clubhouse. Um, and what a weird place to be in. The match that would potentially break Roman Reigns' four straight WrestleMania main event streak would be a women, women's title match. Um, but yeah, it feels like it's very possible. Feels like it's kind of likely. Rousey performed very well at WrestleMania. Flair just broke Asuka's streak. They're building up to something really big, you would think, at WrestleMania next year. Brian Knight, if you were to book WrestleMania 35, what would your top four to five matches be? Okay, top four to five, it might be one or two more, but like feature matches. Flair Rousey, I'll give you. Cool. The Miz and Daniel Bryan. That is a WrestleMania match, if there ever was one, for the current WWE. There's so much history there. The story tells itself. Miz can be the height of his power as a heel. Daniel Bryan can be the height of his power as a babyface. The dynamics work so well. The guys have tremendous chemistry in terms of characters on screen. Tremendous chemistry in the ring. Like That, to me, feels like the epitome of just a mid-card grudge match. That every great WrestleMania should have or needs. Miz, Daniel Bryan. Uh, Taker Cena potentially in a retirement match. Um, Triple H versus Shane McMahon. Bobby Lashley versus Roman Reigns. Although I don't know that we go there. And just for some sentimental purposes, uh, Samoa Joe versus AJ Styles. I would probably be the list of what I'd be looking at building around right now. But to be honest with you, I haven't thought of it very much. So, 
one or two of those might hit the chopping block. But most likely the one I would stick, the four that I would stick to right now the most would be Flair, Rousey, Miz, Bryan, Taker, Cena, Triple H, Shane. Those would be the four I would stick to the most stubbornly. Ash the King asks, Will Shinsuke Nakamura turning heel help him grow as a WWE character? Well, it's got to do something because it's not like that babyface run was doing any damn thing for him. So I don't see why not. I don't know if it'll make a difference. And again, it's road dog writing for the character. So what do you expect? Um, excuse me. A lead writer. So he's the lead writer for the other writer. Oh, whatever. Um, the SmackDown creative team in process. We'll see what happens. But Shinsuke is infinitely more interesting as a heel than as a babyface. And... I'm curious to see where they go with it. Andrew Harrington. Should Braun Strowman go to SmackDown in the Superstar Shakeup? Yes and no. Yes from a standpoint of perhaps a change of scenery would do him a little bit of good. It would be a chance to expose him to a slightly different audience, slightly different talent pool. You could go and do some different things to, with him. Some of the things you've done with him on Raw already you can't redo on Raw, but you might be able to redo on SmackDown, and they work a little bit better. Um, different, fresh opponents. The challenge with Braun going to SmackDown is he hasn't been established as a true A player, and now you want to send him to the B show. Other problem that I envision is who are the legitimate opponents for him on SmackDown? Like, who do you have right now that you would send him at? Who do you have right now that would really gel or vibe with him? And if he did, it'd probably be somebody coming over from Raw with him, so I don't know. I mean, there's a chance that he ends up making the move. I just don't know that it's going to make a whole lot of difference for him. American Alucard. If you could bring Minoru Suzuki to NXT... What one match would you do? Suzuki, one match in NXT. I think you referenced like bringing in the Jushin Ligers of the world and stuff like that. And, and I like that comparison. Like if I was going to do one match with Suzuki. From a physical standpoint, Aleister Black would seem to work quite well. Um, and they could do some mind game type of stuff back and forth. The one that probably really jives and really makes the most sense to me in terms of like you want Suzuki to be this type of character and what would kind of rattle his cage or piss him off, the Velveteen Dream would do so. Just to me. And again, I don't have the most extensive knowledge of Suzuki's repertoire in history, and that's fine. It's probably to the better that I don't. Um, because what I have seen, I like quite a bit. He kind of reminds me of that angry grandpa type of stuff. And that angry grandpa type of stuff could really work with the Velveteen Dream. What the hell are you doing? That's not being a man. Grow up, act like a man. It's kind of like that Roddy Piper gold dust type of uh, dynamic from WrestleMania 12. That dynamic really worked. I feel like Suzuki and Velveteen Dream would probably work even better than, let's say, Suzuki and then Aleister Black. So you could dream about it. Velveteen style, I guess. Uh, but that would be my answer. Antonio J89. Is Bray Wyatt's child support a baby face or a heel? <laughs> heel all the way because it's fucking child support, especially the amount of child support they reportedly have to has to pay. I don't give a shit. And this could be from a jaded guy standpoint. This could come from a standpoint of being somebody that pays way too goddamn much, it feels like, for child support himself. But I'll put it to you this way. If 6000 or whatever damn 6000 a month or whatever the hell he's supposed to pay, if he's got to pay that much of child support, I don't want to hear this bullshit about hey, expecting the type of lifestyle that he had. Nah, bitch, get off your ass and get a fucking job. If he's got to give you that much child support, then maybe the kids don't need to stay with you. Maybe the kids need to stay with Bray and slutty Auntie Jojo. Where you can ride around on mini ponies and piss off money all over the place. I mean, seriously. 
This pisses me off so bad when I hear things like, I remember back in the day when Erlacher had himself a bastard baby. I know, not a great thing to say, but it is what it is. I mean, it technically was a bastard baby. And I think he was paying the mom at that time like 3000 a month in child support, something to that effect. And she was trying to say that that wasn't enough. Now, she was supposedly real estate agent and doing this and doing that. Getting knocked up by a celebrity, marrying a celebrity, should not be a career goal. It should not be the end to your financial means. It just should not be. And I have a fundamental problem with these ladies being able to profit like this to this level and this degree. It's ridiculous. Like you hear about these big celebrity divorces and like Tiger Woods' situation. I bring that up because what he did obviously was terrible and he's a scuzzbuck and a piece of crap human for it. What the hell did she need $140 million for or whatever the hell it was between cash and properties? Oh, so she got cheated on it. That, that, bullshit. One or two million and send her ass packing. 140 something, whatever the hell it was, million. That's ridiculous. That is insane. Why? Because she married him and popped out a couple of brats? That's just ridiculous. So Bray Wyatt's child support, while you might want to sit there and say it's the baby face because he's the one ducking and dodging, ah, ah, it matches the screwy wrestling world that we're in. Bray Wyatt's child support is clearly the heel. Bray Wyatt is the baby face. Make no mistake about it. Sam T, when will you stop watching WWE and start watching Reviewing Impact? I didn't know that I had to stop watching reviewing WWE in order to start watching reviewing Impact. Uh, as far as the Impact part of it, we'll see. I always keep leaning back towards wanting to go back, but the last time I went back to him, it didn't last very long. And it wasn't a very good experience at all. And I'm hesitant to believe that it's that much better now. I hope it is. Some people seem to be thinking better about it. Uh, but honestly, in terms of the people that were really left for Impact Wrestling anyways, they were the ones that, for the most part, were the hardest of hardcore, die-in-the-wool Impact fans. And no matter what that company was going to do, they are automatically going to say it's great and awesome anyways. So I cannot really use that as a measuring stick as to whether or not I should invest two hours of watching it every Thursday night. Because they're always going to tell me yes. They were telling me yes last time. And they were fucking idiots. That was shit. Just no, 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 no. No defenses. No excuses. It was S-H-I-T. Shit. And that's okay. It is okay to admit our favorite brands have moments in time where they are not great. It is okay to say at times that they just suck. It would help if everybody in the wrestling community at large and in general learned this. Yes, your favorite wrestler is not awesome 100% of the time. Your favorite promotion is not awesome 100% of the time. And trying to always put a rosy spin on it is kind of a naive way to go through things. It's kind of a kiss-ass, shillish way to go through things. Be better than that. You sit there and mark out for the greatness, and that's fine. Own up to the suckness as well. Just saying. Stone Jones. Will Raw reach record low ratings this year again? Yeah, we'll see what happens when you get around Memorial Day and 4th of July and those holiday weeks and what happens come football season. We'll see. All right. Definitely in the realm of possibilities. Um, but I don't know if it would dip much lower than what it had last year. Um, that's probably like the low baseline or close to it. So, All right. Well, anyways, that is it. We're out of time for part one of this Q&A, part two of the Q&A. We'll be coming at you soon, so if your question didn't get answered in part one, stay tuned for part two, and even if it did, watch part two anyways, brother.